The history of mummification can already be rewritten. In order for the body to turn into a mummy, it is enough to use one single material. I will also tell in this video about a terrible event in the history of the Catholic Church, show a ritual mask from Japan, and tell you how mummies can kill people. Be sure to watch the video to the end. Hi friend, you are on the Kirtop channel. Ancient Chariots in China a long time ago in China, archaeologists found an amazing treasure. Five ancient chariots with horses and seven graves with people under them. It was a burial place around the first millennium BC at the end of the Bronze Age. Horses were very important animals for the people of that time and they used them to move quickly and make connections with other cultures. All horses were adult males between 9 and 12 years old and were used in chariots as draft animals. Perhaps they were trained for chariot riding from a young age. When horses were in their prime, they were buried with dead people as a ritual. This amazing find helps us learn more about ancient cultures and their attitude towards horses and chariots. But not only did archaeologists did this, they also found evidence that horses were used in funerary rituals with or without chariots, which became especially important during the Zhou era, 11 to 3 RD centuries BC. During excavations at the Shijia archaeological site in Gansu province, scientists found a pit with chariots and horses. They dated this object to the 7th to 6th century BC. How Catholics Tried the Dead once a strange and terrible event happened in the history of the Catholic Church, Pope Stephen VI decided to hold a trial against his predecessor, Pope Formosus. But there was one problem. Formosus had already died and been buried for a year. Incredible. But Stephen VI nevertheless decided on this. He ordered Formosus' body to be taken from the grave, dressed in papal robes, and placed on a throne in one of the most famous churches in Rome and then began the trial, which became known as the, the Cadaver Synod, or Trial of the Dead. Since Formosus naturally could not speak and defend himself, a man sat behind him who pretended to be his voice. As a result, the dead pope was accused of all sins and punished. They cut off the fingers on his right hand, dragged his body on a horse across Rome, and threw it into the river. I want to remind you that all this happened to an already dead person. But Pope Stephen VI could not long rejoice at such an outcome. People were outraged by such a terrible action, and soon a rebellion began. Stephen was sent to prison where he was eventually killed. Subsequently, another pope, John IX, forbade judging the dead so that this would never happen again. And the body of Formosa was found by the monks, and he was buried again, already with due respect, in St. Peter's Cathedral. So even the most important people in history can sometimes do terrible and strange things. Write your opinion in the comments. Don't you think that there are too many terrible scandals associated with the Catholic Church in their entire history? And what could be the reason for this? The find more valuable than gold and silver. Amazing finds are sometimes found in ancient Egyptian tombs standing on a par with gold and silver. One such example is the work chest, with tools found in the tomb of the carpenter Ankef, located in a necropolis near Asyut in central Egypt. On the box was an inscription dedicated to Anubis, the lord of Kereret, and an indication of the name of Ankef. On the side of the chest was also a list of the tools that should have been contained inside. Six axes, six adzes, six chisels, and six other tools with copper blades, possibly saws. However, the contents of the box turned out to be different. Seven axes, seven adzes, five chisels, and no saws. The contradiction between the list and the contents is explained by the fact that the entire chest and tools are only models. The box is 18 cantimeters long, while the miniature axes are only 15 cantimeters long. These are symbolic tools intended for use only in the world of the dead, where Ankef continued to work as a carpenter for his great master, the Pharaoh of Egypt. Much more important than the contents of the chest itself was the inscription on its side, which served as a kind of spell. The find dates from the Middle Kingdom, approximately 1981-1802 BC. The material of the box is limestone wood covered with a layer of lime. This exhibit is now in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, serving as an example of amazing artifacts that testify to the beliefs and customs of the ancient Egyptians. Mummy's Hand with a Coin 
A child's mummified hand holding a copper coin is a unique find that has puzzled scientists and opened up new horizons for research of mummification and the use of copper as an antimicrobial agent. Discovered in 2005 in an abandoned cemetery in Nyarlorinka, Hungary, this find has aroused wide interest among specialists. An analysis by a team of researchers found that copper contaminated on the infant's body contributed to soft tissue preservation. This was the first recorded case of copper-induced mummification. Scholars were also interested in the fact that the coin was in circulation in the middle of the 19th century, although the burial took place in a cemetery abandoned many years earlier. Such a find was an example of a unique case of mummification using copper, which may attract the attention of researchers and archaeologists in the future. This discovery provides an opportunity to expand our knowledge of ancient civilizations, their traditions and customs, as well as the use of various materials and methods to preserve the dead. Scientists have to study more cases like this to understand how copper and other materials were used in mummification and what were the beliefs and practices of ancient cultures associated with this process. Grave of the Mysterious Surgeon In Hungary, archaeologists have discovered a tomb of a mysterious man dating back to the first century AD, in which a set of high-quality surgical instruments was found. This discovery was made near the town of Yazbarin, located in the center of the country, where researchers initially excavated in search of artifacts from the Copper Age. With the help of magnetometric surveys, archaeologists were able to discover a long-abandoned cemetery of the 6th, 9th centuries AD and began to excavate several rows of graves. One of the graves turned out to be older than the others and dates back to the 1st century AD. This burial was shallow and contained the remains of a man who died between the ages of of 50 and 60. The researchers were surprised by the presence of metal instruments in the grave, which they were able to identify as Roman surgical instruments. The tools were hidden in two wooden chests buried at the feet of the deceased. Scientists note that the tools found had a very high quality workmanship. The set featured tools such as tweezers, scalpels, needles, and even the ancient pliers. They were made of copper alloy, decorated with silver inlay, and had removable, replaceable steel blades. A small stone mortar was also found in the grave. The wear on its surface indicates that it was often used, possibly for making medicines. Such medical kits are extremely rare in the ancient Roman world, and this may be the first such find made on the outskirts of the Roman Empire. Who the buried man was, one can only guess, as well as about the cause of his death. Analysis of the bones revealed no visible signs of injury or disease. In the grave itself, there were no things or objects that could reliably indicate the origin of this person. Therefore, scientists do not know whether this ancient surgeon was a local resident or he came here from afar. However, it is planned to conduct a DNA analysis, which may help to solve this mystery. Archaeologists also note that such a medical kit at that time was extremely expensive. Only a very wealthy person could afford to buy it. The presence of such a set may indicate the high status of the deceased and his professional skills. Perhaps he was one of the best surgeons of his time and his knowledge and experience were very valuable. Ritual Mask in Japan Archaeologists have discovered a unique wooden mask from the 3rd century in the ruins of Nishi Iwata, Osaka Prefecture, Japan. Researchers believe that the mask was used in ceremonial rituals during agricultural festivals around 1,800 years ago during the Yayoi era. This find is one of three wooden masks found from this period. The mask, carved from cedar, measures 30 centimeters high and 18 centimeters wide, with holes for the eyes and mouth and holes in the sides for ties. It was found at a depth of 3 meters next to a wooden bucket for water and a burnt tool that looked like a mattock. These items may have been used in agricultural festivals. During the Yayoi era, the Japanese transitioned to a sedentary agricultural society and used farming techniques brought over from Korea. The mask, according to Kaworu Terasawa, director of the Makimuku Gaku Research Center, may have been purely a festive ritual attribute, as it is too heavy to wear. Terasawa added that the mask may have been a head spirit representing the power of Okimi, the title of ruler of the Yamato Kingdom. Ruins of a Luxury Winery 
Archaeologists have discovered an ancient 2,000-year-old winery at the Villa Quintilius, located by the road, the famous Via Appia. They believe that it was an imperial winery where guests were not only treated to wine, but also entertained. The villa is located near Rome. Previously, it belonged to the wealthy Quintilian family, but then became the imperial property. The villa is known for its beautiful architecture, thermi, and even the arena for chariot races and gladiator fights. In 2017 to 2018, archaeologists discovered traces of a winery near the arena. It was built or expanded during the reign of Emperor Gordian III. The winery had an area for squeezing grapes, vats for settling the wort, and a wine cellar with clay amphoras for storing wine. The winery was very luxurious. The floors and stairs were lined with expensive marble from different countries. Spectacles were staged here for guests who rested in luxurious halls around the courtyard of the winery. Archaeologists believe that this winery complex offered guests not only delicious wine, but also wonderful entertainment in the form of theatrical performances. The Soap Lady of Philadelphia in 1875, in Philadelphia, during work on the improvement of an old cemetery, two strange bodies were discovered. Men and women who did not look like the dead usually look. Instead, their bodies turned into soap people due to the process of saponification. This process occurs when the fatty tissue of the body, under the influence of certain conditions, such as alkaline soil and certain enzymes, turns into a waxy substance that resembles soap. The scientific term for this body condition is adipocyrus. After their discovery, the remains became part of museum exhibits. In the 1990s, the man's body was removed from the exhibition for detailed study. X-ray studies showed the presence of pins in the tissues used to fix the burial shroud. Studies also showed that the man was a European who passed away at the age of 40, 50, and was engaged in physical labor. The woman's body was also studied. Pins were also found in it, and blonde curls were preserved on the skull. Her skeleton was strong, indicative of good health, but her teeth were almost completely missing. Currently, the body of a man is in the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History, and the body of a woman is in the Mutter Museum in Philadelphia. Cases of saponification are rare, but they testify to how unique the processes that occur with the remains of a person after death can be. Due to the large amount of adipose tissue, their bodies were able to remain in good condition for many years. The study of such rare cases as the soap couple allows scientists to better understand the processes that occur in the human body after death, as well as expand our knowledge of the history and culture of different eras. The first images of the inhabitants of the legendary Tartessos. Archaeologists from Spain are exploring the ancient town of Casas de Turunuelo and have found unique stone busts of the ancient Iberian civilization of Tartessos. These are the first depictions of the Tartessians seen by the modern world. Tartessus was an ancient city in southern Spain. The Tartessians were engaged in trade and mining of metals. This civilization is considered one of the oldest in Western Europe. Tartessian culture was a mixture of local Spanish and Phoenician traditions. The people of Tartessus were skilled metallurgists and knew how to work with metals. The newly found stone busts have beautiful faces, ornaments, and hairstyles reminiscent of ancient sculptures from the Middle East in Asia. We know very little about the Tartessians and their history is full of secrets. Their city of Tartessus was on the Guadalquivir River in Spain. The Greek historian Ephor described Tartessos as a flourishing civilization engaged in the production and trade of metals. Archaeologists do not know for sure who the Tartessians were, an indigenous population with eastern influence or a Phoenician colony. Scientists think that the busts found depict the gods of the Tartessians, although it was previously believed that their religion did not use images of gods. The sculptures were found on the site of an ancient temple. Perhaps they were part of a stone fresco with deities and a Tartessian warrior. Curse of the Tomb of the Polish King I will tell you about one mysterious story related to the Jagiellonian curse. You probably know that Casimir IV Jagiellonian was a very successful king of Poland. He made his dynasty one of the most important in Europe and even won access to the sea. When Casimir died, his wife Elizabeth of Habsburg commissioned a stunning tomb for him. It was a real masterpiece, decorated with coats of arms and biblical scenes. When the queen also died, she was buried next to her husband. In 1973, they decided to open this tomb in order to carry out restoration. 
However, after work on the tomb, 10 out of 12 people who participated in the restoration died. This caused rumors about the Jagalonian curse that touching the tomb leads to death. But you know what? Scientists have found an explanation for this. There was a dangerous fungus in the tomb that causes serious diseases. This fungus usually lives on dead bodies, and when people opened the tomb, they inhaled its toxic spores. There is speculation that this fungus also lives on ancient Egyptian mummies. Maybe the workers who opened the tombs of the pharaohs also suffered from the curse of the mummy because of this fungus. But this is only a theory since there is no direct evidence of a link between the fungus and deaths. As a result, the fungus could become a real curse of the Jagiellons and Egyptian mummies. Although this is not mysticism, it still sounds mysterious and interesting, right? So even today, passing by ancient tombs and mummies, remember this mysterious story and be careful. Thanks for joining me on this adventure. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video if you enjoyed it. I look forward to seeing you again in future releases where we will continue to discover unique stories hidden deep in the past. Thanks for your views. Bye everyone!